So of the four proposed constitutional amendments, Amendment 1 is arguably the only controversial one on the ballot. Uh, so Amendment 1 is the so-called right to work amendment. So essentially this would enshrine the right to work uh, law that we currently have on the books in Tennessee as a constitutional provision. So Tennessee, since the 1940s, has had a right to work law on the books, meaning that you are not required to either be a member of a union or to pay union dues as a condition of employment. So this would actually uh, put that in the Constitution. So obviously proponents of this um, would like to signal both to the business community and to employees that this is a commitment on the part of Tennessee uh, to being maybe more business, business friendly um, or um, make it more difficult should subsequent legislatures want to then change the law, they would have to go back through this process of amending the Constitution. Now, opponents of Amendment 1 uh, obviously tend to probably favor labor unions. Um, they want to maybe make it easier in the future should we want to go back and change the right to work law in the state. And so, again, you kind of see the, the two sides sort of shaping up on this one being one of the only amendments that's uh, seeing really any serious opposition to it. So the three remaining amendments are arguably less controversial than Amendment 1. Amendment 2 basically outlines a process by which the lieutenant governor or the speaker of the house, if we don't currently have a lieutenant governor, uh, can actually ascend the duties of the governor if the governor is temporarily incapacitated. So this sets up a process basically similar to what we have with the U.S. president where they can transmit a letter that says, hey, I'm going to be temporarily incapacitated. Maybe they have to undergo anesthesia. They're going to be undergoing medical treatments and they're going to be out of commission for a few days, etc." Right now, we don't have this process in place. So the Lieutenant Governor and others would then ascend to the office if the governor is removed or if they pass away in office, but we don't have a temporary provision. So this would allow the Lieutenant Governor to ascend that office temporarily without having to resign their duties. There's also a provision there that if a majority of the cabinet within the executive branch uh, deems that there is a temporary incapacity, so for instance, if the governor were having to undergo some medical procedure and they couldn't sign a letter to that effect, then the majority vote uh, would then go to the governor's cabinet to declare that that incapacity basically exists. So the two remaining amendments, Amendment 3 and Amendment 4, uh, basically clarify some language in our Constitution that is no longer constitutional. So Amendment 3 essentially declares that slavery, uh, involuntary servitude, is basically forever and always outlawed under the Tennessee Constitution. Um, Amendment 4 basically removes the provision where clergy were not allowed to serve in the Tennessee General Assembly and this has been deemed unconstitutional by the courts. It actually went to the U.S. Supreme Court in the 1970s. And so this has basically been in effect, uh, you know, for over 40 years now. But we're basically cleaning up the language that prevented this.